Hey everybody, I'm Chanel Herlin and you are watching the new Music Buzz. On today's show we have Zoe Deitch and director Max Winkler from the film Flower. In our artist spotlight we have Merz and then we talk to rapper Prof. So as you can see we have a lot going on, let's start the show. Hey, <laughs> what's up? <laughs> Hi, it's your second grade swim instructor, Pookie Baby, aka Prof, and you've just been buzzed. Flower is a film about an awkward 17-year-old girl, Erica, who sets out to raise funds for her father who's in jail. Along the way, she forms a bond with her soon-to-be brother, and of course, trouble follows them as the film progresses. Sound like fun? Well, let's check it out. What are you doing later? Do you want to come over to my place, play Mario Kart? Uh, I have to go meet my future stepbrother. He just got out of rehab. Try to be nice. Is that him? He's hot. Oh, I know. That's shoddy. That's the sponsor. So that's not Luke? No, there's Luke. Damn, junkies are supposed to be skinny. So, Erica, you must be psyched to have an older brother type in the house. Totally psyched. I get to have a complete stranger living in my home. No offense, buddy. Yeah. Babe, are you okay? I really want to punch you in the face right now. I just don't want to ruin those lip injections that daddy gave you. At least my daddy is not in jail. Luke's a complicated little guy. He accused a teacher of <clears throat> fondling him. Thinks he saw him around town. Shaking down a child molester is our moral obligation. Nobody's going anywhere until we see this guy molest Aww. somebody. I don't think he will. He's like a pro. That's what you get like a subterranean dungeon for. I read the original draft and this uh, written by this brilliant writer named Alex McCauley. And there, I'd never seen a character like this in a movie before. And I'd never known an Erica, but I myself made a lot of questionable decisions in high school and rode my bike around a lot and was let go from a few schools. And I related a lot with her rebellious spirit in the sense that she always wanted to do good. She just sort of went about it, maybe not the right way. So then what's the plan? What if we break in and tie him up? Yeah, dom him like he's our little bitch. Surprise! <laughs> I'm not stalking you or anything. As you can tell, I have like major daddy issues. I had a very confronting moment when my sister saw this movie after a bunch of other people had seen it and mm -hmm. told me, what a crazy, insane character. She's out of her mind. You know, wow. And my sister saw it and was like, this is the closest um, character you've ever played to yourself. And I was like, what do you mean? And I didn't know what it meant and I still don't. But um, I don't know if I know an, I don't know if I know an Eric. I know, no, I don't know if I know an Erica. I don't think I'm an Erica. Do you no, think I'm you're an not, Erica? but I think your energy and your restless spirit is very much in her DNA. Diplomatic response. Well, no, if you I, don't know her, do you would you be friends with her? I would try to be. She's somebody who so is so afraid of abandonment. I think she tries to ruin relationships before they can ever attempt at hurt right. ever even come close to hurting her, which is such a fragile and delicate balance to have with a friend. It's so tricky and can be manipulative and can be scary and it can be heartbreaking. And I think especially in, through her, this journey in her in the movie, she's just trying to have some semblance of control and um, and floundering and um, losing her footing, so. I think by the end of the movie, she's a better candidate to have friends once she's kind sure. of regained her innocence and learned to accept love and intimacy in her life. Have any, either of you did a bad thing for a good reason? That's Ta beyond the statute <laughs> of limitations. <laughs> yeah, I have. Uh, and I can't really think of specifics, but I, I, I think something we do as kids is we take on these causes and make it sort of all about us. And really what we're doing is sort of masking our intense anxiety and fear of um, you know, being vulnerable or seen. And um, it's something that I, I really loved about this movie, Margaret, this Kenneth Lonergan movie, Margaret, which we're also doing a press junket for. Um, but I just loved, I, I, it's something that we do and it's um, just, it feels very human to me. And your artistic skills. In this movie, did you did you were you always an artist? Oh, you mean my, the dick pics? I have the dick pics. <laughs> yes. Uh, hmm, I'm more of like a watercolor girl, so sharp oh is not my format, my medium. But uh, I drew a few of them. Yeah, you did a lot. Yeah, I drew a few of them. It was very important that I was very involved in the creative process of that of that book. 
Okay, you're so very involved in the creative process of the whole thing. Well, when does this when does this movie come out? And Friday. Tell you Friday. March sixteenth. Yeah. We are really excited. And yeah. We hope people go see it. We yes. love the movie, and we're grateful to Rough House and Orchard and Max and you. And this bowling alley. Yeah, this and is actually a coffee. surprise party to express our gratitude for you. Yes, well, surprise! Well, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> so much for having. We love you. Thanks for coming thank aboard. You. And exactly. Next time, I'll get you to draw for me. Where are you guys going? To go buy some crack. You wanna throw it down? It's okay. They're not buying drugs, Bob. Just let them. No, I get the joke. After the break in our artist spotlight, we talk to rapper Murs. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back after these messages. a string of mass school shootings, including the most recent Parkland shooting in Florida, students are demanding change at the national level. Both Republicans and Democrats alike can agree on one thing and one thing only, and that is that no student should have to endure the trauma of another mass school shooting. There's been a lot of talk on both sides about how it's too soon to talk about this, or this is not a political issue, but in reality, this is something that affects everyone even if you don't have a child, even if you don't have a sister, this is affecting our nation. On March 24th, students are coming together in Washington, D.C. to protest and demand change when it comes to gun reform laws. So join the march and go to www.marchforourlives.com. MERS stands for Making the Universe Recognize and Submit. I think they invented a word for this recently called a backronym. So originally there was no meaning to it. It was just the four letters I could do best in graffiti. So I made it mean something later on. Cheating, I guess, kind of. Once upon a time there was a one-man gang Who never ran from anyone or sold cocaine OG's in the city, y'all knew his name So here's a little story about the gang that he claimed The hottest nigga I know, he from Okie Dog Crib When he get up out the pen, better hope he don't trip Teriyaki up pastrami, he was always in some beef A legend to this day, they talk about him in the streets It's not a real hood, it's something that he made up To piss gangbangers off, cause he never gave a fuck He wore 
White pro wings with peaking green strings And dare anybody on the shore to say a thing Seen him knock a lot of dudes out with one swing By his side he always kept the back The first rap I wrote that I thought I had something I went to school and told my friends about it And they laughed in my face in 6th grade Um but the first rap that people liked, and I always tell artists that it's not what's your favorite song, it's what people love. It's, you know, it only exists inside until you bounce it off someone. That song was called Red Dots, which is also based on a musical, like the title of a new album. I went to go see uh, Little Shop of Horrors in high school, our high school musical, because I like the girl that works stagehand. And uh, the guy says something about Red Dots and Linoleum, and I made a song about uh, these six grown men who had come to my school trying to kill me because I beat them in a rap battle in a nightclub over the weekend. And uh, there was no way that I could literally kill them. I couldn't afford a gun, and my friends who had guns didn't want to get involved in a rap battle beef. So um, this is pre-50 Cent, pre-Tupac rap, East Coast, West Coast beef. This is a real beef. So I said, well, how can I get these guys back? Oh, I know. I'll make a song. And it was my first solo complete song. And it was about how I killed them, and uh, that kind of empowered me. Um, Cause I got them back. They didn't know it for years to come, but I, I murdered all of them on wax. What if I could ice down all my tears? Will my face be covered in diamonds from ear to ear? Would real niggas respect me then? Would some of these white girls want to be more than my friend? If I could take all of my tears and cry them into a chain, I wonder how many million more followers I gain. I bet my socials would be super lit. It wouldn't even matter what type of vocals that I had to spit. I could turn all the salty water that fell from my eyes into some diamond carrots. Then when I cry in public, I could finally do so without having someone tell me I should feel embarrassed. Cause I'm not. And I cried a whole lot when I filed for divorce and when the homie got shot and not one time did I laugh at Tyrese's tears cause when I was separated from my son I cried every day for almost a year and near the end of that year span I was filled with joy because my new fiance and I were expecting a baby boy but after 40 weeks he was born without a heartbeat so we chose to march forward instead of retreat new album March 16th a strange journey into the unimaginable I wasn't thinking when I came up with the long title honestly um, but this album came after a lot of uh, tragedy this year in, my, in the past few years of my life. So it's been divorce, court cases. Um, my wife and I lost our newborn son in labor. So it's been a rough time. And uh, I went to see the play or musical Hamilton. And uh, there's a scene where he's talking about losing his son. And it's called, it's, the name of the song is not the unimaginable, but he keeps repeating the word unimaginable. And uh, this is my last um, album with strange music so far. Uh, so it's a strange journey because this has been a strange journey into the unimaginable because this past four years has been crazy and I'm hoping that what's to come is so amazing that I can't even imagine it as well so that's how the title came about it's not a great hashtag um, it's not rolling off the tongues but it's from the heart at the end of that year span, I was filled with joy Because my new fiance and I were expecting a baby boy But after 40 weeks, he was born without a heartbeat So we chose to march forward instead of retreat I've been crawling up the side of a mountain Problems that got me falling back down <laughs> My real name is Nick Carter and uh, my buddy Corey Nielsen over there, he gets a kick out of that. Uh, <laughs> don't play games with this heart is what he tell. He's been telling me that for a decade now. Um, and when I was younger, I, I really wanted to rap under my real name. And I'm so glad because it was before the Backstreet Boys came out and I, it would have been devastating. So it would have been devastating for me because that Nick Carter would have blown me away. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful I didn't use my real name uh, now. But you know, ordering a pizza and stuff is difficult, you know, because people think you're joking. Um, the single right now is G Lollipop, featuring my homies Fashion and Prof. Uh, the next single will be Midtown. And uh, my personal favorite is Vows, which is a dedication to my wife. I make art. Y'all make hits. I make music from the heart and what you make it. Softer than the couch, step up, get knocked out Popping bottles in the club, I'm just chilling at the house Playing war games with four dames in your name Don't get high, stay flying, I ignore lames Tame as a terror
scarier But it gets scarier when you try to test the best in your area Aerial attacks and burials are wax like an Annabelle tale But scarier in fact If you're looking for me on social media, you can follow me at M-U-R-S 316 That's Instagram and everything else is M-U-R-S At Merce on Facebook and Twitter And oh, Snapchat is at M-U-R-S 316 Merce 316 Hi, my name is Merce and you've just been buzzed Huh? On top of the world, baby. The gang star has got to be the short shot. And it's like that. I'm about my company now. My legacy, my music. Been doing this for eons. Peons, best to catch this vision of excellence. Precise rapping ability. The money, though, it's got people like the funny, yo. Get the hell I know it's probably just some gangster thing. Maybe it wasn't gang related. You want to accuse LAPD officers in a celebrity's assassination? I want to be the cop to solve it. I think Biggie's murder is related to Tupac's. This might have been a professional hit. This case is legendary. Ahead of his April 13th release date for his album Pookie Baby, rapper Prof stopped by the studio to talk to Cindy about the release and his alter ego. Let's check it out. That's how I'm feeling. I'm at the top of my game, you know what the deal is. Somebody order up me some more mirrors. So fresh, so clean, how come this is so fucking easy? First of all, I'd like to say I'm, I'm scared of heights, and I have one I have one leg, I have one foot on the rooftop here because behind me, what are we, six stories up? Um, Seven? Okay, we're, speaking. my back is to this, and so I'm just gonna be just like this. And But yeah, what, my name's Prof, and um, someone else came up with it. It was a basketball term, basketball nickname, and then I just was rapping, and then they just called me that for a while. So your last release was back in 2015, Liability. So what's happened from then to now? Like, what took so long for the next project? Damn. We, we want to know. Come on, let what us took know. took so long? I don't know. I don't know what took so long, man. I don't know. It's just, it, um, with our team, I just like, I guess we like quality over quantity. And, you know, the music videos we make, we produce, we direct, like we have our hands in everything. So it takes a while. And um, I'm on Rhyme Sayers now and, and you know, I was with, uh, still with Stop House, so we're feeling each other out business-wise. Emails, more people to work with, chefs in the kitchen. So once the product was made to do the secondary stuff, um, you know, video shoots and all that kind of stuff, it, it, it takes a while. So I don't know. I'm a perfectionist too, so I, there's, I could still go back and make changes to the record. You know what I mean? Okay, so um, Pookie Baby is your latest project. So I want to know, how did you come up with that name? And is he your alter ego? Yeah, I mean, Prof is the, my, you know, my name name, but I've gone by Kaiser von Powderhorn, 
a super aggressive mixtape series. I've gone by Gompo. Um, and now Pookie Baby. It's just, you know, just falling in love. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm, I started calling everybody else Pookie Baby. And then they basically put the mirror up to me and everybody else started calling me Pookie Baby. You know what I mean? So I call my dog, hey, little Pookie Baby, even though his name, his name isn't Pookie. You know, his name's Pilot. Um, and so I started, you know, I'm on the road. I'm like, hey, Pookie, Pookie. You know, I'm calling people Pookie. And then everybody just, whoosh, just turned back on me. And everybody started calling me Pookie. And um, yeah, that's, that's how it happened. So do you take Pilot with you on the road a lot? I wish, I wish. That dude is, he'd steal all my shine. Everybody wouldn't even go, people wouldn't even be paying attention on the show. They'd just be looking at him like he's too handsome. Uh, they call me the bar breaker. You should kick me out the club. I'm a big bad wolf. I'm a Jameson Doug. Hey. I wave high while I'm cave diving day high. Coded in KY, the Lord G on the hayride. I hustle like an Ethiopian custodian. Quick, grab your trophies. You can leave behind the opium. Hey. Executive American all the way from a derelict. Drinking at the Sheridan Darren chicks in the marriages. Oh, yeah. Wasn't pimping, it's been a minute. Hey. You know, I'm a really complex dude, and I like I value my privacy, and I value bucking out and jumping into crowds and turning up and getting drunk and high, and you know, like I do it all. Um, but I, you know, there's obviously some yin and yang and some separation that I need to have in my life to survive. You know what I mean? You just don't do heights. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting I'm getting used to it now. I might. Uh, yeah, you no, know, I still don't do heights. Jacob don't do heights. Prof don't do heights. Pookie baby don't do heights. I'm a big wrestling fan, so I want to know, how did you come up with Andre the Giant? Uh, Andre the Giant is just the song. It's like, I'm getting bigger, getting bigger, huh? So I just wanted a cool, clever clever title for it. And I'm like, you know who, a dude who kept getting bigger from like eighth grade on or something? The dude got huge. So I never mentioned his name in the song. And um, the YouTube, that the video kind of went off and it's cracking right now. Yeah. And there's like an angry Andre the Giant fan base that's like, I can't believe this fucking clown. Like, what is he doing? You know, like... Uh, trying to ride the Andre the Giant wave from the from the documentary. I'm like, there's a documentary? Like, I don't know. So you had no idea? You just... No, I had no clue. I'm like, Andre the Giant getting bigger, getting bigger, you know? Like, I love his stories and the pictures of his hands and beers, and I love how much he drank, and, you know, I, I, I'm a fan, but, you know, I'm not trying to catch a wave or anything like that. Funeral, I got no need for a shooter. Yeah! I'm getting bigger. Save me some. Drop down to get to Eagle on. This CD, Pookie Baby, is gonna release April 13th. Boom, 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 boom. Go get it. So a little under a month. Um, I dare you to buy a physical copy. I, I double dog dare you. Um, and then I'm I'm I act, I'm actually working on a uh, a gallery show. I paint, and I've been painting for the last two years to release this uh, this summer after the uh, Pookie Baby release. I'll do a show in Minneapolis and uh, have a gallery there. So where can new fans follow you? Uh, they can follow me at www.me.com. Hey, I mean, I'm assuming my fans are already following me, but if you're dumb enough to like watch this interview and be like, hmm, let's check up on this dude. If you're an idiot, you can follow me on, I don't know, Instagram, whatever. Just yeah, Google like Prof, you know? Um, most of my socials are Prof Gampo, P-R-O-F-G-A-M-P-O. Um, and I just want to say that um, I got in a fight last night. This isn't a cold sore before this. <laughs> Oh, uh, what happened? It was a fight um, with a, uh, some, uh, uh, some vice lords. Hi, it's me, Pookie Baby, a.k.a. Goddamn You Look Good, a.k.a. Prof, and you've just been buzzed. So that's all we have, a special thanks to Zoe Deitch and the cast from Flower, Murs, Strange Music and Rapper Prof. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, double tap on Instagram and follow us on Twitter, all at The New Music Buzz. Before we go, we got a chance to attend the red carpet premiere for Flower and got a chance to talk to the rest of the cast. 
So, I'm Chanel Helen. Have a look at day. I'm character in Flower. I'm a, kind of a, an ex-school teacher and, um, who um, has a, an interesting past. Zoe Deutsch uh, comes and sort of digs me up as a kind of uh, dare of sorts with her friends. They have kind of a system where they um, are able to get older men in compromising positions and blackmail money out of them. They're really kind of crafty young women. And, uh, and so I'm their next target, but things sort of go a little sideways with she and I, and we have this weird connection that neither of us were expecting. Um, and it's, uh, it's a really interesting, uh, shocking, relationship that kind of sprouts from this weird beginning. Uh, so I play Luke, basically a fresh out of rehab troubled kid who's being moved in with his dad to his dad's new girlfriend and meets his new stepsister Erica. And uh, even though that he's a little bit sheltered and held back and reserved, she kind of breaks that bubble from him and makes him experience a lot more life than what he was used to at first. A lot more life, a lot more life really quickly. Um, I play Kala. Um, I'm, I, it's unclear if she's dumb or on drugs. Um, I'm gonna go with both. No way. No, I don't know. That was what I was thinking. I was like, but it might be like lithium. I don't know. She's out of it and she's uh, in her own galaxy. You know, I totally would hang out with her. I can't think of an example where I've done anything like this, but I'm in full support of what they're doing, to be honest. I'm like, Rob, sorry. Uh, rob every guy who's a, who's a pedophile. I don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> I play the uh, stepdad. The kind of dorky uh, stepdad named Sherm. You know, it was an ind independent film shot in the valley, so it was small and intimate and a great, great uh, loving crew that all seemed to care about the project. And Max put together a great ensemble, and it was, it was, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a very sort of exploratory, uh, free, you know, use the script, but don't. Uh, it wasn't very strict about that, so it was, it was, it was a good experience. The new music buzz is brought to you by Monster Products, pure monster quality with monster sound. For more music entertainment news, go to www.thenewmusicbuzz.com. Hi, my name is Dylan Glula and you've just been buzzed. <laughs>